It's been such a great day of Thanksgiving prep, and I only have one more thing to make, and that's the maple whiskey brine for the turkey. I've been brining my turkey for years, and it always results in a flavorful, moist bird. Now, I'll get the brine liquid going. I have two quarts of water in the pot. Any brine solution obviously has to have lots of salt, and that's what makes it a brine. So I'll add a good cup of kosher salt. And now for the fun stuff. My regular brine recipe uses apple cider, but I'm breaking out the whiskey, and I'm gonna pour in almost all of the bottle. This looks like a lot, but I'm making a lot of brine. I've got two bottles of maple syrup. I like to balance the salt of the brine with some sweet, and normally I will add brown sugar, but I thought maple syrup sounded so delicious, especially with the whiskey. Now for some other pretty and fun ingredients, I'll add a whole bunch of orange peel. I just sliced it right off the oranges, and then the peel of some green apple and red apple. This always looks so gorgeous, and it just reminds me of the holidays. Now, three tablespoons of tricolor peppercorns, five bay leaves, and then a whole bunch of minced garlic for flavor. The very last thing to give it amazing flavor, I've got some rosemary sprigs, and I'll just strip the leaves right off. I'll turn the heat on high, and I'll stir it around and bring it to a boil. When the brine had cooked and cooled, I got it in the fridge, all ready for its date with the turkey tomorrow. All right, the time has come to brine the turkey, finally. Now, I've got a big, beautiful 20-pound turkey in a brining bag. These are so handy. And then I've got the great brining solution I made yesterday, and it just goes right in. The turkey needs to be totally submerged in liquid, and this is way too strong on its own. So the water dilutes it so it's just right. I just keep adding until the turkey is totally covered. All right, I'm gonna get this bad boy into the fridge. It's been in the oven for about three and a half hours, and I'll pull off the foil and take a look. Now this is exactly what you want the turkey to look like at this stage. It shouldn't have any color at all. Now I'm gonna crank up the heat on the oven to 375. That's gonna help it get golden brown. And another thing to help with the color is some softened butter. I'll just grab a little bit at a time and use my hands to smear it all over the surface. Let me fill you in on what I've done with the turkey so far this morning. So the brine had worked its magic, and it was just a matter of pouring it away, getting the turkey out of the bag and under the tap to rinse it inside and out. The salt makes the meat really tender and juicy, but it makes the surface salty, so the bird needs a really good rinse. Then I submerged it in a pot of water to soak it for 15 minutes and make sure all the salt was washed away. I took it out, rinsed it again, and put it onto a baking sheet lined with paper towels and patted it dry. You don't want the wings sticking out, so I just lifted up the bird and tucked them under the turkey and tied the legs with string. I put the turkey onto a rack and covered the whole pan with foil and put it into the oven. Now before it goes back into the oven for stage two, I'm gonna grab a thermometer and I'll just stick it behind the joint of the drumstick I'm gonna get the turkey back into the oven. It's gonna roast at 375 for about two to two and a half hours, and I'll baste it every 30 minutes until the temperature reaches 165. Honey, will you start carving, please? Oh, it smells so good. Hey! Hey, hey guys. Happy Thanksgiving! Happy Thanksgiving! Hey. 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 You're just in time to carve this turkey. <laughs>